What would life be like without Counter-Strike 2? The year is 2023. CSGO's popularity remains on the decline as Valorant continues to steal players and streamers from the aging title at an accelerating pace. Mappers are frustrated by Source 1's antiquated ways, and cheaters are rampant. People see Source 2 as being like a fresh start for Counter-Strike, as a chance to build from modern and from stronger foundations, and to put all past unpleasantries behind. Without it, it feels like Valve are abandoning their most profitable game, and people criticise Valve for doing so. Lidl has a half-priced sale on beans. A new operation drops, Operation Rip Game. Featuring 6 community-made maps, 20 new community-made weapon skins, a new community-made rapier knife, and pirate agent skins based on previously unreleased beta models. The community immediately loses interest in the operation, blaming Valve for only supporting the game because they're greedy and want money. Reddit is inundated with angry posts about Operation Rip Game. One Reddit post suggests CSGO should get a new sniper of some sort, and he's downvoted. Another post suggests making Premiere the primary game mode, and he's downvoted too. Another post is downvoted, but one thing's for sure, people <coughs> clearly aren't happy with the state of CSGO. It may only have been one day since the latest operation, but it had been many years since the last meaningful change to the game. Audi starts a buy one, get two free deal on baked beans. Philip tries to get a promotion with the company and is brutally shot down. Incredibly, one post on Reddit isn't immediately downvoted, and it suggests that Counter-Strike should move to the Source 2 engine. The community responds to this post with conflicting thoughts, some being upvoted, others being downvoted, seemingly at random. But the community agrees that a Source 2 port of CSGO would solve all of the game's issues but would be impossible to make, and even if it was possible then it probably wouldn't solve all the game's problems. And then the entire post is eventually downvoted as well, disappearing off the face of the internet once more. Audi combines forces with Lidl, rebranding as Al Diddle Diddle. Other supermarkets double down on those irritating loyalty card deals in the hope that it will counter this threat. Obviously it doesn't, people hate those things. And Al Diddle Diddle's market share skyrockets. 2024 now and CSGO's popularity continues to dwindle a little. The creaking Source 1 engine clearly no longer fit for purpose. In the absence of any new content to cover, 3 Clicks Phillips videos become increasingly weird and abstract and people begin to worry that he's lost the plot. Other YouTubers turn to making their own content, becoming leak and rumour channels, fueling the demand for a Source 2 remake. A new feature called Snap Tap breaks the game's mechanics, yielding uncapped diagonal movement speeds. Frankie on PC and 1080p returns to YouTube with a video demonstrating his skills with this new feature. Titled Too Fast for Snap Tap, it becomes a YouTubing phenomenon, surpassing 10 million views in the first week, but worst of all, it spawns a wave of imitators who ruin all matchmaking games as they attempt these stunts themselves. Of course they fail, because turns out you need scripts to be actually effective with it. The bunny hop community, however, thrives, and the Half-Life 2 done quick team gets to work on a newer, even faster speedrun for Half-Life 2, this time hoping to break the 30 minute mark. An achievement now within reach thanks to the amazing power of SnapTap. TM. Al Diddly D's aggressive baked bean discounts cause the stock price of the competition to plummet, and they soon buy out Asda, Tesco, Morrisons, and Co-op. Sainsbury's merges with Waitrose and nobody continues to visit there. Al Diddle Diddle becomes the first major supermarket to have a standing army, with surprisingly decent pay, pension and benefits. The community eventually takes it upon themselves to port CSGO over to CS2, but to their surprise they discover this new engine doesn't actually solve any of the problems they had with CSGO. And if anything, SnapTap now appears even more of a problem, and with Source 2 it leads to overpowered aiming as well as excessively high diagonal movement speeds. It proves unfixable, solvable only by limiting servers to just 32 tick, which puts the player base in an impossible predicament. Cries for a new Source 3 engine begin. Al Diddle Diddle enters the 2024 UK election with its promise of supplying the cheapest beans the world has ever seen. It hires Rowan Atkinson as its official spokesperson, and he takes delight in declaring all failed rivals as husbeans. Al Diddle Diddle unites the country, taking the election by storm with its long-life lettuce advertising. Numerous countries from within the EU try to join the Al Diddle Diddle trading zone, but they're rejected. Valve takes down the community-made CSGO Source 2 port and gets to work on a new subtick system that should improve hit reg and mitigate SnapTap's moving speed exploits. Al Diddle Diddle invades Europe, stating it's just a special bean-sharing operation. Historians recognise this as being the official start to World War 3 Al Diddle Diddle Bungaloo. China gives Al Diddle Diddle a final warning and imposes harsh input tariffs, stating that they don't want their country to be swarmed by a cheap, low-quality foreign crap. With surprisingly little outcry, Al Diddle Diddle buys out every petrol station in America, and it's later revealed that the American politicians were bought out with the promise of a lifetime supply of beans. 
Mr. Trump finally lives up to his name. World leaders are now all hooked to the delicious taste of Al Diddle Diddle Beans and Mr. Putin now also lives up to his name. The Half-Life TV 2024 Community Awards hot up with a tie between Three Clicks Philip and War Al. No matter how many more votes are cast, it remains perfectly split 50-50 somehow. Eventually it becomes clear that there's only one way that this can be settled, and a fight to the death between the two is arranged to be broadcast live via Al Diddle Diddle's streaming network to a crowd of millions. Billions even. Doran complains he didn't win again. Nobody cares. Again. Al Diddle Diddle's middle midweek aisle drone deal turns out just to be a front, as millions of them are sent to swarm attack America's shipping routes. Al Diddle Diddle jacks up the price of petrol in America a dozen fold to fund its war effort and to choke out the American war machine. Following the turbulent political and economic situation, development of CSGO subtick is stalled. Nobody notices because only one developer was working on it anyway. However, Al Diddle Diddle's grasp over the HLTV awards means that the fight between Three Clicks Philip and War Al can still go ahead as planned. The battle is long and hard, with both fighters gradually derobing until they're just a sweaty, flailing mess of skin on the floor, every slap of sweaty man flesh broadcast in crisp 4K 120fps. It's glorious. Every missed punch is memed as being bad hit reg in the Twitch chat. Round after round of sweaty chokes and guttural moans are broadcast around the world as people watch on in excitement at the increasingly morbid display. Yet it remains perfectly balanced, as all things should be, 50-50. Adverts for Al Diddle Diddle's beans line the arena. Al Diddle Diddle's stonks go up. America falls to Al Diddle Diddle and the armies of Middle Earth rally to face the budget supermarket in a really epic battle scene that uh, I think would look something like this. Even these united forces cannot repel the influence of Al Diddle Diddle's discount beans and soon their economies fall to the might of the Diddle Empire. Sainsbro's remains the sole challenger, banking on pensioners and Sunday evening sales to keep the dream alive. The fight between War Al and Three Clicks Philip rages on, both a sweaty lubed up mess, squeaking and grunting about the sodden stage. Then, an advert flashes up around the arena. Al Diddle Diddle's tinned beans are now free. Philip glances up in amazement, and War Al takes the moment to choke him out from behind. Philip's vision fades, and his life leaves him, and all he can mutter is, free. Free. Philip's dead. War Owl the victor. The capitalist nightmare is unfolding, yet all the Twitch twat can Twitch chat can post is AI hoax. The camera pans to Philip's lifeless corpse and the chat changes to Good riddance, Owl Diddle Diddle Shell. The supermarket's dominance is undisputed. Attempts to resist seem hopeless. But then Sainsbros announces their own sale of beans. Not for free, but for negative money. Al Diddle Diddle panics, countering with beans for even less negative money. Or is it more negative money? I don't know anymore. And for some inexplicable reason, this money-giving exercise destabilizes their whole global operations and for the first time ever, cracks begin to show in Al Diddle Diddle's monopoly. War Al gets sponsored by Sainsbro's and the resistance begins. 